That's tomorrow, and that is it for us today, and we will leave. Leave you with a That's tomorrow, and that is it for us today, and we will leave you with a I can't do it. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll do it live. Fuck it. Do it live. I can I'll write it and we'll do it live. Um, why is my mic, why is my, hold on a second. There we go. Usually it's the microphone that's not working today. It's the camera. What the fuck? <sighs> All right, it's Thursday night. Welcome aboard, everybody. The Philly Guy here with you, Joe Quills. Welcome to the Philly Guy Speaks on this Thursday night. Uh, yeah, it's a dumpster fire ready, just like the Phillies game today. Uh, oh, my God. Uh, coming up here, we'll talk about that game. Just random thoughts because I was working during the game. Um, why? Also, I'll talk about, well, this is planned. You know, and always, if you knock, feel free to do so. That's what we want you to do here at No Filter. Knock on the bottom right-hand side. I'll bring you in. We'll shoot the shit. Um, also, um, why why does MLB make us play these cold weather games? Um, I'll break down the teams that should be hosting today, even though they're not. Um, I'll talk about Lamar Jackson, uh, why I would not trade for him. Uh, just some thoughts on that. I mean, my personal thoughts, I think I've said it before. Uh, I'll say it again later on. Um, Phillies open up at home next Thursday. I'll give you some things I am looking forward to seeing at the ballpark. Some things there as well. So, uh Hope everybody had a great week. Me, I am 24 hours away from vacation, and I do not have a. Okay, I don't have all my all my sounds sound effects on there, as I do on this computer, which won't work because I get the nah, fuck it. Anyways, uh, <laughs> you can tell it's that type type of a day here today. Um, uh, just to let you guys know, I did see a great uh, documentary last night. It was about the Flintstones. Uh, turns out in the Middle East, uh, the people of Dubai do not like the Flintstones, but the people of Abu Dhabi do. I'm waiting for somebody to say, oh, come on, that's all. That's bad. And I had to do that because I've been sitting on that all day. Um, Started typing in our work chat, and I got pulled into a uh, meeting, a conference call. Uh, so, anyways, uh, Penguin. Uh, yeah, nobody likes to walk the car in their feet. No shit. <laughs> but um, yeah, but it's not going. It's it's a vacation for my real job. It's not a vacation from here at No Filter, because uh, I have not one. Not two, not three, but how many shows next week? <gasps> well, three on No Filter and, not, and my regular podcast. Uh, that's because I am going to have a special Monday night pod, uh, Monday night show. Um, I promise Play Action Real I would do this, even though... Um, Yeah, I, 
uh, Rock and Reese says, Joey should have said, Yabba Dabba Doo. Yab, yabu, Yabu Dabby Doo. Ugh. My math ain't working. My brain ain't working either. It's one of those days, people. <laughs> um, um, but it's not a, va- it's not, I, it's a work vacation in terms of my real job, which is over there, away from everything here. But um going to be doing some things um, around the house all week. Uh, we do have the tailgate on Thursday here in Philly, the Blue Bleacher Brothers. Um, so um, stop before you hurt yourself, Joe. Trust me, I'm half Polish, Mickey. I'm already... I'm already in concussion protocol. <laughs> I just don't have the Polish last name. Play my mom for the Polishness. Um, but seriously, I got um, the Turf Paradise show on Monday. I said I would do that for Play Action Real, even though he's working and can't go to Turf Paradise. I'm hoping he can, because I'm, I'm not sure about the situation with the um, the off-track betting with um, – in the state of Arizona. So I don't know if he can use any type of an app or anything like that. So, um, so we'll, um, so I'll, I'll look over that card and it should be an epic shit show because I looked at the program just to see what I'm looking forward to without actually pulling up the program yet. There's 11 races on, um, Wednesday. And it will be the first five races are quarter horse races, and they're two year old quarter horse trials. So, um, yeah, and I'll, I'll, I'll keep you informed because I'm going to be uh, uh, promoting it uh, on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter. So it'll be on there. So, um, so Monday will be the Turf Paradise show. And even though Play Action Real can't go, maybe he can find a, an app that he can play on if he wants to do that. Or um, um, or you can just, you know, maybe somebody can put in bets for him or tell people, hey, don't play this horse. Joe is horrible lately. Uh, but, you know, it's just have some fun with it. You know, it, you got five trial races which i'm already dreading because this time of the year most of those two-year-old races especially in the quarter horse realm with the with the trials a lot of those races are going to be horses that are first time starters so good luck with that um dk does not have horse racing um at least not um at least they don't partner with a racetrack i know because i have DraftKings. i used DraftKings earlier today um i'll get to that in a second um fanduel does uh fanduel is partnered with tvg um that's why for example uh at least i have it on my cable system and yes i do have cables so what um you do have a um, um, totally lost my train of thought there. <laughs> that's that's the type of day it is. Uh, um, oh, hold on, I pulled the cord out. But yeah, Drave Kings doesn't have horse racing, but Fanduel does because they partnered up with uh, TVG. Caesars, I'm not sure. I know I know if you're in Vegas, uh, that Caesars app will, but I don't know about the other one. Um, I don't know if you're outside of Nevada, if you can do it or not. Because um, I used to use the Westgate app when I was out there. Um, and if I wanted to, I could have played that way too. But... Um, but you know it's it is what it is, and uh, um, we'll see what happens with that. So, um, so you'll get eleven races out of me, 
uh, on Monday night. And what I will do is, what I'm thinking about doing on Tuesday when I do my regular show, I'm thinking about doing, I'm thinking about doing something where maybe I start the show, short, start, short the stream. Let's try that again. I figure if I start the stream earlier, depending on how long that video is, maybe I time it in such a way that, like, let's say if it's an hour, I'll go eight to nine with that, walk away, and then 9.15 do the main, I, I don't know. It, it's just me thinking aloud here. So because of the fact that it's, I'm doing it on Monday, and it'll be on Wednesday when we do when the races actually occur. Uh, then Thursday night, um, if I'm still alive after the Phillies game and uh, uh, hanging around AJ and uh, the tailgate and everything, uh, there will be a show Thursday night at 9:15. Um, maybe late, who knows? Uh, but we'll what happens there and then friday will be the audio only uh podcast maybe i do it friday mm. i was thinking about maybe doing it before tony's show but we'll see what happens but see when my mind starts wandering in this add adhd lmnop mind like i have i mean if you saw my my uh my browser right now, I got six tabs open. My brain is like 60 times six. That's how crazy it is. So, but anyways, it's opening day. Happy New Year, everybody. And uh, if I had it, I would play the old Lang Syne just for shits and giggles, just to annoy Mickey and everybody else. Uh, but, um, yeah, I mean, um, Aaron Judge hit his first home run in his first at bat, dead center. Shocker. Um, and I, the only reason why I say shocker is because he's what eight foot seven. Okay, he's about six eight, but you get the idea. Um, because he's so damn tall, he has a natural uppercut swing. He's one of the few guys that can get away with a natural uppercut swing, and. Um, yeah, he had, he had a home run in his first at bat this year. Um, the Yankees won that game five, nothing one game closer to Gabe Kapler being fired, who I predicted, uh, with one of my friends that Kapler will be the first manager fired this year. Um, and then, um, one thing I remember, one thing I recommend to you guys, um, because I do gamble on sports books and shit like that, especially online. Um, with um, I have a sugar, I have the Sugar House app, which is Pennsylvania and New Jersey only. Well, actually, there's a couple other states, but the app for me will only work in Pennsylvania. And I have DraftKings. Um, one thing I will recommend is download the Picket app. That's P I K K I T. Um, if you download that app and then you put in my referral code, deal goal 7450, you will get between three to $100 from Picket as long as you have a sports book account where you've had more than 10 wagers. You can get, you can get anywhere from three to $100 from them. I'll get from three to $100 as well. So it's a win-win situation for everybody, and and also it's it's win-win because it'll keep track of all your wagers. I look today; I'm still three hundred dollars ahead for this month, even after I um, shit the bed with the NCAA attorney uh, a week or two ago, or the last couple of weeks. I think I lost like eight games in a row. I was like, "You fucking kidding me!" But if you go to Picket, and it's P I K K I T. Code 7450. There you go. 
So that's the information there. Um, I use it all the time. I have fun with people with it. I mean, uh, the one girl that's uh, that I follow on uh, Twitch, I give her a bunch of shit because because uh, she's a Giants fan, she's a Celtics fan. Um, I would give her shit that she's a Yankees fan, but the Phillies aren't in the American League, so you know who gives a shit until the World Series. But um, you know, it's a great way to keep track of your uh, keep track of your wagers and uh, you know joke around on there. Uh, promote shit. Um, also, make fun of me when I have a bet wrong. Because um, one thing I did today, um, and I have to say, it wasn't as easy as I thought it was going to be, even though I said it was easy. Um, I was just looking on there just for last because um, they had a 25% um DraftKings had a 25% um, uh, reboot or, you know, reboot bonus uh, because I hadn't used my account in a while. So I was like, okay, well, I just got my tax refund today. Thank God. That was a shit storm that I couldn't believe. But um, so I put money in there. And I'm just looking at random stuff. I'm like, hmm, Hunter Green's pitching for the Reds. Let me see something here. And he threw a, his over-under on strikeouts were seven and a half. So I figure, okay, four o'clock game, shadows, 100 and some miles an hour. A lot of the Pittsburgh guys that are probably going to be in the lineup are rookies or first or second year players that, even though they may have faced Hunter Green once or twice since they're divisional rivals. I figured it's opening day. He's going to be amped up. You're going to have shadows and everything. That seven hand strikeouts is going over. And he had seven strikeouts in the first three innings. And then he got that eighth strikeout uh, for the first out in the fourth. And then they pulled him. I mean, I wasn't watching the game. I had it. Um, I had the game cast on my work computer going on because I was like, I can't, but I got the eight strikeouts at plus 130. It was a win. Hallelujah. Holy shit. Pass the Tylenol. And then the Phillies game happened. Uh, Phillies got up 5 nothing, and um, I took a walk outside because I wanted to get lunch around the corner at McDonald's. Yeah, I know I shouldn't eat McDonald's. I'm fat and ugly to begin with. Uh, but yeah, I, did, I didn't have anything really to eat here, and I needed to walk away from the the apartment for a couple of minutes. So I walked around the corner, and uh, apparently between the between the roof closing, which I noticed when I got back because the lighting was different when you saw the camera panning down be, uh, behind the picture. Uh, you had that, and also you had um, Trump getting indicted. So my running joke from the fourth inning on was, I'm blaming this on the roof, and I'm blaming it on the indictment. <laughs> but yeah, the um, yeah, it, it's just one of those games that happen. It's one of 162. You know, yeah, you want to start off 1-0, big deal. Um but it, what hurts is you got five runs off of Jacob DeGrom, who doesn't give up any runs. I mean, two years ago, he did an ERA of 1.08. And if he didn't get hurt, he probably would have been uh, challenging Bob Gibson's record of 1.12. But um, apparently, he doesn't get run support when he pitches while he's pitching in Texas as well so far. But they sure came to his aid when he was pulled. It happened. So, um, so yeah. But it's good to have baseball back. Uh, we had all 15 games uh, scheduled today. No rain, no rain outs, no snow outs. Uh, got very lucky this year. Because it always seems that there's always one game that seems to be rained out or snowed out or cold out. 
but um but i do want to go on a bit of a rant here this isn't going to be a tony bruno type rant where i'm veins are popping out of my neck and everything like that and every other words the f-bomb or whatever curse word i can come up with or even create new curse words um i'm going to read off the list uh, i'm going to read off the 15 sites that are that hosted games today washington the Bronx, Boston, Chicago Wrigley Field, Tampa Bay, Arlington, Texas, Kansas City, Miami, Cincinnati, St. Louis, and currently going on right now, Houston, and coming up uh, in a few minutes, San Diego, Oakland, LA Dodgers and Seattle. Now, one thing you'll one thing you notice here. Now, granted, we got away with um, we did get away with having war, uh, having cold weather, but not insanely cold. Um, I remember one year when the Ashers came here in like two thousand. Might have been 2008, 2007. Um, Astros came here when Astros were still horrible and losing about 110 games a year. Um, you had, um, I mean, it even it even snowed that morning uh, in Philadelphia, but you know it didn't stick or anything like that. But you know it's cold when it's snowing in April in Philly, but. The one thing is, Major League Baseball does these schedules 8, 10, 12 months in advance. They're probably already working on next year's schedule. Now, my question is, why is it that we are playing in cities like Washington, New York, Boston. Um, let me look here. Anything else? Oh, uh, St. Louis, um, Chicago. You know why? Why are we playing in cities that have a very good chance of snow or cold while we're still in March? We have enough cities to start the start the season and play them all in warm locales. I mean, I mean, you're playing in Arizona and, and Florida all month. Is it hard to play games that the chances of it being cold? are more on the fluke side than a reality. Now, granted, with global warming and everything, you know, oh, shit, you know, 75 in, 75 in Philly next Thursday or whatever it is. Um, but, you know, that's April. Not that that really matters because you can get a real uh, cold blast. Um, yeah, it's going to be 73 and cloudy on Thursday as of right now. But... Um, but going back to today, now I didn't get a chance to look at the weather forecast for all the cities because, I mean, I'm a weather nerd, but I'm not that much of a weather nerd. But seriously, is it hard to plan out the season, especially if you're going to start before April Fool's Day and have, cold, uh, have the potential of a cold weather site where you're playing below freezing? Do we really want that? I mean, yeah, the fans are going to be liquored up because it's opening day. They won't feel the cold. And in the dugouts, you know, I'm sure that they got heaters for for those cold weather sites. But you still got to go in the field nine times a game. And the times you go up to hit. 
and run the bases. But, I mean, and there's enough sites to get these games in. Now, the only cold weather site you should have is Cincinnati. Because they are the traditional Major League Baseball opener. Now, Major League Baseball has gotten away from them being the first pitch of the season because it was always Cincinnati that opened the season at home. And part of the reason why was back in back pre-expansion days, before Major League Baseball expanded, Cincinnati, and actually if you go further back, when the Giants and Dodgers are still in New York and Brooklyn, you had Cincinnati open up the season because they were the team that was further south. And yeah, I mean, but granted, the season started April 15th back in the 50s, or 40s and 50s, so you do have a... um, um, you do have all the things that go on, but you know, I mean, but this, I mean, but the season's starting sooner and sooner, and that's because they don't want baseball going past November first if they can, and I understand that, you know, I mean, last year we went to what the fifth, I think it was, you know, and that's only because we had the season start a week late because of the uh, because of the lockout, but. Uh, I mean, these these are the sites that should have been hosting today. Uh, Tampa Bay, because they have a dome. They did. Toronto, they have a dome. Uh, if their stadium's ready, because they were doing renovations on the on the stadium all winter. Toronto played in St. Louis today. Um, Houston, they're playing right now at home. First game as world champions, they're down 3-2 in the ninth right now. Uh, LA Angels, they're in Oakland. Uh, Oakland is at home. But uh, don't flush the toilet. You may uh, set up a, set off a septic emergency there. But you know how the last couple of years, the septic system backs up, and next thing you know, you got a shit full dugout. Um, Seattle, they have a dome. But I think their dome stadium is still kind of open. Mickey, if you can confirm that. Um, Because, you know, in the Pacific Northwest, they really don't really have air conditioning. I mean, if you get hot weather, you're fucked. Kind of like a couple years ago, that heat dome hit Portland and Seattle. It was like 115 in Portland. But at least in Seattle, it'll be dry air. Uh, at least the stadium will be dry. It's just that it may be a little cool because of the fact that it's uh, an open air dome because of the, um, um, you know, just because of the way that they build things up there in the Pacific Northwest. Um, but Seattle right now is 50 degrees. Um, but, you know. Maybe I'll watch that game since I get the uh, free games this week on my cable system. Uh, just to prove my point or prove that I'm wrong with what they do in Seattle. But uh, Texas, they now have a dome, a retractable dome. Um, you know, they could, they could host opening day. Atlanta, even though they could get a little bit of cold air every now and then. They're, they they'd be good for home home opener on uh, opening day. Uh, Miami Dome Stadium, Milwaukee Dome Stadium. But I think they they're in the same boat as Seattle, where they have uh, a closed roof. But uh, but I'm not familiar too much with uh, uh, their uh, their Dome Stadium, which was the ballpark formerly known as Miller Park. Um, Arizona, Penguin AC would like that if he was still in here because I think he bounced out. Um, Arizona, retractable roof, especially this time of year. You can leave the roof open if you wanted to. 
uh, the Dodgers, obviously, San Diego, San Francisco. Now, a little chilly in San Diego, in L.A., in Oakland. It's in the 50s. You know, a uh, good friend that I uh, follow on um, Twitter, the Sarge Nick Hines, he said, uh, shouldn't be playing any games this early in the season when it's below 60 degrees. So he kind of gave me the idea for this topic. But, you know, I'm more concerned about the extreme cold than lower than 60. But, hey, it is what it is. I mean, you got to play through it. you got to play through these cold weather games. Um, but I think now with the way how goofy the schedule is going to be starting this year where you're playing every single team, um, probably going to be a lot harder to make up these games if it's the last game of a three three game set between, let's say, the Phillies, um, the Phillies and well, all right, bad idea, but pretend Houston doesn't have an open, uh, pretend Houston doesn't have a dome. Um, if Houston didn't have a dome that last day; it was rained out. Yeah, good luck. Uh, good luck getting that game uh, replayed before the end of the season. Because guess what? Phillies are going back to Texas because they already played a series in Texas in Arlington. So you know you got to manipulate the schedule so you can get that game in. But uh, but that is a bad example. But that's the only uh, game I can think of with the American League team that I know has a game. In the in the western part of the U.S. because um, Seattle comes here, uh, I think the Angels come here. I think the Phillies go out to Oakland. I think, but either way, it's uh, you know, but you know they they got to do something to just to use some common sense and say you know what we're getting very lucky. You know it's uncomfortable for the fans, even though they're probably drunk out of their fucking minds. Even though you got to do more drinking at the tailgates because with the games being quicker now, less opportunity to buy beer. Or you got to chug that shit down faster. <laughs> but, um, but I just think it's just a, you know, I, I think you just got to use common sense with the schedule. And I know that you know we're we're not going to get this perfect world where those fourteen sites that have cold, warmer weather or dome stadiums. I know it's a per a perfect world. That's a perfect world scenario, and it's not going to happen. But um, you know, it is what it is. So, um, but you know, I I mean, I would like to see it. Um, now, granted, it would mean the Phillies would be starting every year on the road. Oh, well. You know, that's the, the great part about the MLB schedule coming out end of August, beginning of September is uh, one thing I do. It's like, hmm, let's see. Phillies go here. Phillies go here. Okay, I may want to go to this ballpark. I may want to go there. Yeah, you know, I, I think that in my head. Even though I never do, because I haven't been on a, I haven't been to a Phillies road game since, well, not counting the Mets or Yankees. Well, I haven't seen the Phillies at Yankee Stadium, but um, the last one I went to was, I mean, was a Mets game, but that doesn't really count because that's just a short ride on a train. Uh, but flying somewhere. Probably 2009 to Chicago. But you get the idea there. But, you know, hopefully hopefully MLB can say, you know what, let's utilize these dome stadiums to start the year. You know, and there's always things that happen where you're planning out the stadiums and the, the, uh, um, the ballparks will say, well, uh, you know, like, for example, next year, since we're in WrestleMania season and this weekend is WrestleMania and uh, I'll have my steel chair ready. So if you start your shit, I'm going to whack you with it. Uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, 
Uh, but seriously, the one thing that the Phillies will probably say is, you're going to schedule us at home that first weekend, and I hope you don't. If you're going to schedule us to start the season at home, make sure it's early games on Saturday. and we're, We need early games Saturday and Sunday because across the street is WrestleMania at Lincoln Financial Field. So if you're going to do that, you know, it's either got to be early games or you got to put us on the road. And it's kind of like the NFL. Because the NFL, you can say, well, we got uh, three games on the West Coast. Because um, the Eagles play the AFC West. Or no, they, they play the AFC East. They play Kansas City. Um let me just see one thing here, because even though we're talking baseball, um, okay, so the Eagles have the Rams and the Seahawks on the road. Um, so what the Eagles may do. And San Francisco does this all the time when they have to play teams on the East Coast, whether it's AFC East or NFC East, if they got three, four East Coast games um, here in, um, on, in the Eastern time zone. San Francisco will say, hey, can you schedule us two back-to-back -back games on the East Coast and we can just stay over... Um, that place in West Virginia, the um, where they used to have that golf tournament. You, you know what it is. Um, whoever's listening after the fact on the podcast. Um, New Orleans does their camp, had done their camps there too. Um, oh, well, you know. Uh, all right, I'm not, I'm going, I'm not going to try anymore with that. But, um, but San Francisco, whenever they have multiple games on the East Coast, they'll tell the NFL, hey, try to get us two games in a row so we can stay there on the East Coast. Now, the Eagles could, if they wanted to, even though it's just the only two trips into the Pacific time zone in a regular season, they could, they could be telling the NFL, hey, if you can... Put us on the West Coast for two weeks. We'll find a place to practice. Like, for example, when the Eagles went from, I think it was the same setup. They went from Seattle to L.A. And the L.A. game, uh, the Super Bowl year, was the year that Carson Wentz blew out the, his knee. The Eagles practiced at Angel Stadium in Anaheim. So I could see... Baseball, you could you could say ahead of time, hey, um, we have we have X amount of games. Um, we have this event across the ballpark. You know, try to get this done ahead of time because even with the link is used for a lot of summertime concerts. Um, Billy Joel's going to be there. I think Beyonce's there. I think Taylor Swift. There's there's like Three or four different uh, tournament, uh, three or four different things, uh, concert that they have there. So, and a lot of times these concerts are planned out over a year in advance. Like, starting, you'll start hearing on your local radio stations, like, for example, I've listened to WMMR here in Philly. And I'm about a week behind on the Press and Steve podcast, but um, I listen to that podcast, and I'll start, and, and you'll hear, oh, we got a uh, got a, a concert announcement at 9:20 a.m., which you know will be whatever it falls into the podcast. And I'll say, so and so's in concert, March 2024. It's like, huh? But a lot of times these concerts they have to plan so far in advance because. Like, for example, if you're going to um, 
If you're going to go to the Wells Fargo Center, you got to contend with the Sixers and the Flyers during the week. You got to contend with the Wings on the weekend. You got to contend with Villanova basketball because you don't know when they're going to have uh, a game other than a Saturday game at the center. So baseball will probably be the same. Baseball is probably the same way. You can say, hey, we got this major event in our um, in our uh, complex. You know, we may want to you may want to schedule us for on the road that week. So uh, that that type of thing does happen. And, um, you know, especially with the way that um, the way that um, the complex here is in Philadelphia, because you got about 20, 25,000 parking spots. And if you had both a baseball and a football game going at the same time, you would have. 110, 115,000 people at both sites if you sold every seat. You, know, you can't do that. I mean, that's why you see a hockey game in a, in a, in a Phillies game or a hockey game in a, or a basketball game in a Phillies game. Now, over the, last, uh, over the last year or two, they put a hockey game there, but nobody shows up at Flyers games anymore. Um, at least not until they start winning again. But uh, but to go back to baseball, I would imagine that if they do schedule things around, uh, you know, you can probably say, especially for 2024, you can say, hey, we have this event in our complex. We have to be on the road. It, it wouldn't be fair to the fans, you know, that sort of thing. And it wouldn't be fair to our uh, our players as well. So, but... Uh, but I, I really don't understand how baseball does not look and say, okay, these 14 teams, we need to have them at home because of the weather and because it's so early in the season, we're starting earlier and earlier every year. So, so um, I'm going to steer away from opening day and baseball and – Let's talk Lamar Jackson. Um, he's, he's his own agent. Now, there was a story a week or two ago where somebody was posing as, as his agent, and the NFL had to put uh, a memo out to all 32 teams that he, he represents himself, and you get a call from somebody other than Lamar Jackson or a family member. I guess if it's not Lamar Jack, if it's somebody other than Lamar Jackson, it's a scam. So, and, and unfortunately people are sadistic enough to do shit like that. Um, trust me. I had like 10 calls today. People say, I got this scam call today. I'm like, I can't help you. But, um, but Lamar Jackson requested a trade. And um, I wonder if having an agent, he would have been signed already by Baltimore. Because of the fact that, if you think about this, agents go through these negotiations like they're the back of their hand, like it's the back of their hand. And truthfully, I would not give Lamar Jackson a guaranteed contract. I would not give him $45, $50 million a year because he was injured the last two seasons. He's a running quarterback. You know that it's only a matter of time before he loses a step. And once he loses that step, he has to be a pocket passer, and I don't think he can be that every play um you know it, it's going to lead to more injuries last two injuries last two years there was injuries i i would not pay him that 40 45 million dollars i really wouldn't now the colt said that they may be interested in him now because he's using that because he's that um because of his classification of the uh um 
the uh, franchise tag. Um, if he were to sign, let's say with New Orleans, um, not with New Orleans, with Indianapolis, Indy would have to give them two first round draft picks. So I don't know about you. I would not take a chance on him. I mean, the 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 regular season is nice. You know, you get him do these electric plays like the way Randall Cunningham did when he was with the Eagles early on. But Mars going to get hurt. And there's going to be something that happens. There's going to be another knee injury. It'll probably be a tear this time that we know of. Because we don't know what kind of an injury he had with his knee. At least, you know, it wasn't that severe. But it was enough that he missed the last six weeks of the season. Um, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't touch him. There's something, it, it, I mean, we've seen this so many times with these running quarterbacks, even though it's nice to have a running quarterback, but you got to be a running quarterback who's smart, knows when to get down, whatever. But, but sometimes even when you're the most intelligent quarterback, always gets down, always gets out of bounds, always does the right thing. There's always that one play that knocks you out. And you can say that somebody's injury prone, like Carson Wentz. But sometimes these injuries are, uh, are so freak that even if you do have a major injury, it's, yeah, I, I, it's hard to call some, it's, I, I, I reserve judgment when I say that somebody's injury prone. Um, now, is Lamar Jackson have the potential to be injured? Yes. Do I want to call him injury prone? No. Because the way football is, you can have the freakest of injuries. I mean, my God, look at even at baseball. Edwin Diaz was celebrating with his team, jumping up and down, and he tore his patellar tendon. Reese Hoskins fielding a ground ball blows out his knee. Non-contact injuries. It happens in baseball, even though it's even less of a chance, but it happens in football too more frequently. Um, but you, you got all these injuries, and then you have you have. Um, um, Lamar Jackson, I I would be, I wouldn't want to spend that big money. I mean, in a way, I'm also worried about what the um, I, I'm also concerned what the contract will look like with Hertz. Now. He had a shoulder injury, but he looked he looked fine until that final throw in the Super Bowl because the final throw in the Super Bowl was the only throw where it was like, what the fuck was that? I mean, all his passes were pinpoint. He threw a couple of nice deep balls in the Super Bowl. You know, there were games, you know, he had times where he had to throw the deep ball and throw him right there. But... Um, you know, but, you know, I think that they, I think that he's smart enough that, you know, even though I may be a little bit of bias because of the fact that he is the Eagles quarterback, he took the Eagles to the Super Bowl. Uh, if it wasn't for the defense and a bad, bad call that had to be made, um, he may have been looking at an Eagles Super Bowl parade. And I would have been looking at $3,000, uh, 1100 in my pocket. Um, oh, I got a knocker here. I'm sorry about that, Penguin. Whoops. Knock back in. Knock again. I accidentally uh, took you out. 
I apologize for that. I fucked up. Let me give myself one of those while Penguin AZ uh, knocks again because I screwed up. So as I wait for Penguin AZ to come back uh, into the knocker room because I screwed up, um, yeah, um, I wouldn't do, I would not touch Lamar Jackson because he's going to be, he is going to kill your team. Um So I'm just waiting here for Penguin AZ to knock back in here because I screwed up there. Um, well, first I screwed up because I was probably sitting there for a couple of minutes like an idiot that I am. And uh, then I accidentally uh, knocked them out. <laughs> Not Mama Said Knock You Out by LL Cool J. I'm LL Special J. <laughs> but... Yeah, I mean, I'm still getting used to some of these uh, settings on here, so. Um, so, okay, so that was my brief football talk there. Uh, that was something that came up here that, um, that was something that came up uh, over the last week that I wanted to mention. I, I think it was mentioned last week. I forgot to mention on Tuesday night show. So, um, I am looking for one thing here as well. Um, uh, for, uh, before I do anything else, I do want to say congratulations to Marcus Stroman. Uh, he was the first pitcher uh, to um, to be called for a pitch clock infraction. Uh, congratulations to him. Uh, you get this lovely case of turtle wax as a result. Um, Okay, there we go. This time I won't screw up, Penguin AZ. Joe, Joe, Joe. Yo, what's up, man? What's up, brother? Oh, Look hold what on. I got. Hold on. Look at that. Uh, my D backs are on uh, top of the first. 
with two men on. Let's go, baby. Um, wait a second. Why Let's is this? Let's go. Up? Hold on. We got D backs action, yo. There we go. Now I can. Now I can do it through the earphones. Yeah, I have. Uh, we got D backs action, baby. Yeah, they're Let's in LA go. tonight, right? Yeah. They got two men on base. Top of the first. Let's go. Yeah, like like I said, um, Arizona. You know, you don't. You just don't know. Like you know, I I look at it. I like I might have I posted on Instagram tonight. You know, like look at this. Let's go. Nice. Let's go, baby. But you know this this team has got nothing to lose. Huh. Like zero. You know, like like we talked about or like Nick. Like these teams come, this team is coming in like, you know what? Like they're coming in, like AJ said, they're coming in like always expecting to lose. So if if we win or whatever, but we got a young team. Baseball, from what I've started to pay attention to, I've never, and like I said, I've never been a baseball guy. Like I don't, you know, half of the time I'm like, I'm lost. Last yeah. show I was lost. Whenever you're talking like all these names, I'm like, Okay, I'm fucking lost. But now Wait. I'm like... Is this what you say? Is this what you say? Who the fuck is that guy? Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like, you know, it just like... I never... Baseball was never my sport. Yeah. But now I'm like... Now that it can move a little bit and... I never wanted to watch. You know, I, I was never able to... Go and watch a game... Like my parents couldn't afford it, so it was nothing that I I could go and see. So it's nothing I, like I could watch basketball, and it, it was so yeah. fast paced. You know, football is a little bit fast paced. Like baseball was always for me like so like, man, you have to watch a game for like two hours. Yeah. Plus commercials. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was today, I was at work and I I looked at my, on ESPN the app. The Orioles game was still going on. It was three o'clock in the afternoon, my time. Yeah, they had a ten nine game today. Yeah, but I'm like, you know, it's still like for me, the attention span has never been there. But now I'm like, now that I think they made some stuff around, and I'm, and now I'm like, hey, you know, let me pay attention to this, and let me, and I'm like, I'm excited. I I I'm like, I got the game on. Well, it's like all of a sudden you're in a baseball. We went and watched some games. You know, we went to watch the Cubs on spring training. And I'm like, why haven't I been doing this? Yeah. I had a fucking blast, man. Yeah. Like, you know, the wife was like, she was having a blast more than I. Oh, can we like, and I think, you know, she, she's willing to go to a lot more games. And I'm like, okay. You know, and I think baseball, I hope baseball never loses that family love and family like hey going and watching the game and sitting there like i think that's it's been losing that and i hope with these new rules it might change but i don't know yeah anyway, what do you guys what do you think i mean it's 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 so hard to take a family of four to a game yeah i mean it's gotten harder and harder with each passing year because the because the the salaries keep going up and who pays for it in the long run, the fans. I mean, like, for example, I said to somebody today uh, on my work chat, um, somebody said, um, yeah, I could really go for a pretzel or a hot dog right now. I said, oh, no, somebody said, was saying, uh, you, I wouldn't get a, a water ice today, but I would get a pretzel and a hot dog there at, at, at Rita's. And he said, oh, I can go for a pretzel right now. I said, I could go for a pretzel and hot dog right now, but I'll get it next Thursday while I'm at the Phillies game. He goes, yeah, but it costs so much. I said, yeah, I don't go to many games, so I'm okay with buying it uh, every once in a while. But, you know, but four tickets, soda, hat, hot dog. And you know what? Even now, and I'm going to I wish talk I could go and get some merchandise. You know, yeah. you want to go. You, yeah, you want to go home with maybe 
a flag or yeah. a hat or a shirt or something. But I'm like, by the time, you know, I like to drink beer. So I'm two or three beers deep. That's yeah. almost 50 bucks. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, you got to get, well, actually, Arizona is the cheapest place that you can get a dog, a hot dog for. So what's that? Like seven bucks. But even then, like, you know, like seven bucks, it's, is it gen- generic hot dogs? Sure. But the thing is that they, they've made it so expensive to go to games. But then they're playing these players endless amounts of money. Mm-hmm. So you have to, you know, it's it's a trickle down effect. You have, you know, people are going to pay to pay to play and pay these players yeah. this amount of money. And uh, just before I... Uh, you know, and I'm a Packer fan. I don't. I don't care about like. Yeah. You know, I'll pay a hundred dollars or three hundred dollars to go watch a game if it's nice seats. But you know what? That's what they know yeah. that they're gonna get. They know yeah. they're gonna get those people that are gonna pay seven hundred, eight hundred dollars yeah. for a fucking seat. They know they will. And uh, it's just, just like a matter of thing. And just to let you know, I I can tell that you don't have the remote control because I see that we went from the baseball game. Yeah, we went Fortune. from. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the wife is watching Wheel of Fortune. Yep. <laughs> I had to joke with that, but yeah, no, I but mean, no, it's... you know, it's like that. That really is like I wish they would make, you know, where why wouldn't why wouldn't you want fans showing up and filling the fucking seats up to where you have to like turn down people? Yeah, you know, especially in a team that sucks. Like you know, mm-hmm. Oakland can't get no fucking fans. You know, like we saw it on these uh, shows brought to you by uh, Bleacher Brothers, like where some areas can't even get, nobody showed up. Marlins fans, who showed up? Nobody showed up. You have to be a hardcore fan or do whatever, to even show up to spring training. Now now you want people to expect to show up to games? the The Marlins fans will show up. They just don't show up till October. Yeah. But even then, like, you know, it's not, I mean, I now, like, I'm excited about baseball, man. For me, my sport was basketball first. And then, you know, football started gaining. Now, I like a little bit of football. I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm trying to, baseball was just so boring to me so long. But now that they've, just you know they might have got a fan that's now i'm gonna watch it and even if it takes two or three hours fuck it i'll watch it yeah you know i'll watch it to the end whatever let's go yeah yeah and i and i'm i mean i played baseball and all that so you know i went through that and then i had my face where i was like eh. then i then you know one night um when i'm sitting on my computer back in 2007 i decided you know what I'm going to get season tickets for the Phillies. I had them for about seven or eight years. First year I had season tickets, the Phillies won the World Series. Bam. Yeah. Now, how can you not just, like, keep being, you know, that's it. just so, like, baseball. And it's just, you look at people that go, you look whenever any it's on TV, mm-hmm. you, really, you don't see, like, Joe Q, you know, the Penguin AZ, play action real and like you see your families you know you see families that are there they got hot dogs they got nachos they got a beer they yeah. got soda or you know they got cotton candy yeah you know why have they made it so difficult for families to show up it just it all uh i don't know you know What's, and the it's... wife was like excited when we went to watch a spring training game she's like tom i i hope we can go see more games you know, maybe she had a little bit too much to drink. But even yeah. then, like, you know, a drunk don't lie. So she just wants, mm-hmm. she's like, I love baseball. I love yeah. the sport. I'm like, all right, then. So well, that just added more to my, uh, you know, my yes, relationship. Yes, her in a couple of weeks. Do you still want to go to a game? <laughs> oh, no. And I, she will. You know, it's like, yeah. I think she, she really would. You know, and it makes it a little bit tough with, we have kids. And they're both girls. So, you know, they get restless and, but I'm like, I wish I could like send them, like give them to like this babysitter and be like, okay, hey, let mom yeah. and dad watch a game. 
and you, yeah. you guys go have fun at the ballpark. You know, go do stuff that's for kids. And that's why I think a lot of ballparks don't. I think Arizona Diamondbacks actually do have a area. Do the Phillies? They have what? Like where kids could go and like yeah play and yeah yeah yeah. It's uh, right behind center field. Well, right center field behind the bullpen. Uh, there is a fanatic play area as well. Um, you know, they they have a play area there. You have different things there. Um, you know, they 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 have that, and yeah, you know, I'll be trying to show off the what they have there, even though it's been there a couple of years now. Uh, but you know, they do have those areas as well. But one thing I would recommend to you is, uh, especially if you have minor league teams in your area, because I know that you do have the Arizona Rookie League, but I don't know how they, um, ticket-wise, I don't know how you would get tickets to those. That, that's, that's a great question. I don't even know. Yeah. And maybe I'll, I'll talk to Play Action Real because he's a little bit more of a baseball guy, but, you know, I wouldn't mind going to, and half of the time, they, they probably don't even charge you to go watch them play. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you just watching to go these guys and I'd be all right. You yeah. know, they're, they're playing. And that's why I've enjoyed a lot of college sport more a little bit than professional, because once you get to professional, like they feel like, like Lamar Jackson, like, you know, he could do whatever and think that he needs this money. Yeah. Yeah. But he's, all these players are trying to make that money. Yeah. You know, like you look at these guys, they're trying to get there. And they're like giving it all they got. Mm -hmm. And like, you look at LeBum and you know, like Kyrie Irving. And you look at all these guys like, man, yeah. Do do you deserve that money? Eh. But don't feel like it, it should be given to you. Earn exactly. It. You know, just like every, just like you did when you were coming up. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But, I'm done. I'll let you uh, run the rest of your show. Sorry. Okay. No, not a problem. I mean, yeah, because the one thing I would say is because um, look at those minor league options, especially for a family game, uh, a family time outing. I mean, you know, granted, or even um, the college games even. Yeah. You know, they like, we'll, we'll go watch ASU and like, you know, I got girls, so. You know, maybe. You never know. You might get it. Yeah. Or maybe if you get a minor league game, because uh, there's a couple of coaches that are, um, there's a couple of female coaches and managers. The Phillies hired a coach or a manager who's female. The Yankees had one last year. Yeah. Rachel Balkovich, I think her name is. Um, you could, you could, if you look ahead and you say. Well, that team has a female coach and or even uh, Brown University. They had a player. They had a player who was female who pinch hit in a game. You could say you see that girl that's pinch hitting. You see that. Well, woman, girl, woman, whatever you see. You see that manager there. You could use that as motivation, not only for baseball, but anything. It's like, you see her, you see her Matt, being a manager for that team. You see that girl who's actually playing in this college game. You can say, that can be you. You can do whatever and, you want. But, and you know, they're, they're real women, Joe. They're like, you know, like you could do whatever you want, man. Like you don't have to try to change who you are or yeah. anything. Yeah. And you know, you look at like you look at half of these softball teams that are college, half of them are have a college a woman that's a coach. Yeah. You know, half of them do. Yeah. But you know what they're doing, whatever. And at the end of the day, they're still women, they're still girls. Yeah. Right? Like, why are you trying to tell me that, you know, why you gotta change? Just be a fucking girl and do what you can. Yeah. And do what you can. If you're a dude, whatever, do what you can as a dude. You know yeah. what? I didn't, you know, I didn't fucking make it to be that good. You know, nobody, I, like that guy that 
change to be a woman that's yeah. summer dude. Like, what do you like? Does that make you any feel any better? You fucking cheated. Yeah. Going from a guy to a girl, you fucking cheat. So that's all out the table for me. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah, but the one thing I would say with you and your kids, you never know. They might, they may like the game of baseball even if they don't play. It's like, hey, daddy, can we watch yeah. baseball? You know have a little father daughter time with baseball or, you know, they, they, I mean, you'll never know if they just like it or not game. until you go, you know, just go to a game, yeah. go to a game. And like, you know, they'll, they even like, I like to watch wrestling too. They'll be like, Oh, Alyssa bliss. Some of these, my kids are like, Oh dad, Oh, you watch. And I'm like, yeah. So they pay attention to a lot of the stuff that I watch. Yeah. So, you know, they're up and you know, I'm just going to put on baseball or softball and like, see, you know, I just need to get them out there. They, yeah. they're just sitting around wanting to be on the tablets all day. So, and you know, half yeah. of it is me most of the time because yeah. they they can't sign up to do whatever, you know. So, yeah, because you never know. They may like it and they say, "Hey, hey, Dad, can I try this?" You know, open open up them, and if they don't like it in the long run, hey, that's fine. You you took a shot at but, it. Thanks, Joe. Thanks for letting Glad me to have you, man. man. And uh, so, I will catch you tomorrow night on your show with, right. uh, well, you, Duncan Dad, play Action Real, The Last Call, around 9.15. I always say around because we know how Tony is. Yeah, <laughs> just look out for Joe. Thanks for all the time and commitment you make, man. Your shows are always great. Look out for our boys, Play Action Real, Steven Luker, AJ, Duncan Dad. You know, we we keep saying this, but you all know the platforms. We're on the same platform. Yeah. No filter under the Bleacher Brothers tag, exactly. for lack of a better word. Yeah. You know, let's. I'm here. I support everybody. I and do the appreciate is mutual. that. You guys do that. Do that too. Like you do it. Everybody else does it. Like you know, they show up if they can, and if you can't, you can't. Yeah. You know. If you can't, yeah. you can't. It's just it's life. Oh, yeah. but you know what? The game is back on, baby. The wife turned on the game. Let's <laughs> go. There we go. It's 2-0. D-backs. Yeah, I got, I got money on San Diego tonight. I got Come San on, Diego. Uh, I got San Diego on the run line tonight. But I, I'm not sure if you heard me earlier today. I did have uh, Hunter Green over seven and a half strikeouts. You got it. He got the eighth strikeout, and he said, "Okay, Joe got his Joe got his winning bet. Let's pull him for the game." <laughs> At least it seemed like that. No, but good. But he was up there stuff. in the pitch count too. Good stuff. So. I mean, like I, I like I like that you're like it's so. What was the temperature t today in Philly? Like you're like you're wearing like a like a hoodie or do you have like do you have like a thermal on and like you know you got footsies on and all kinds of shit over there in Philly, Joe? What you doing over there, man? Thirty nine right now outside. I do have my sneakers on, my regular sneakers. I got my jeans on. I think you have like llamas or like thermals, all kinds of nah. warm stuff going on. Nah. It's got to be like 20 below for me to do that. Now, I, I just got I just got the sweatshirt on because I was so cold this morning that I kept it on all day. That I like it though. I don't like all that red like, but it's not even a red. It's kind of like a maroonish red. Yeah, right? it's a burgundy maroon. Yeah, I don't like the like blue it. part, but it's not I do. blue based. Well, not this blue. Oh. But yeah, it's And you don't like Philly green either. No, and that's coming back next year too. Thanks for letting me on your show, Joe. Glad to have you, man. Appreciate you, brother. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate you as well. Penguin AZ, everybody. You kicked me out. Just did. <laughs> Poof! And there goes Penguin AZ. You can catch him Friday nights around 9.15. I say around because we know Tony sometimes goes to overtime, and then he goes double overtime. Then he goes to double dog dare you, and then he triple dog dares you, and then he goes to the shootout, and then he goes to the double shootout, and then we we play the game that never ends. But you get the idea. Around nine fifteen, 
Duncan Dad, Penguin AZ, Play Action Real, The Last Call, great show. I occasionally hop on there and knock, and you know it's uh, a lot of fun with everybody there. So uh, join him uh, Friday nights. So um, yeah, a lot, and that and that's something I will recommend for any family who goes to a mine uh, who lives in an area um, that has minor league baseball. Um, I did a search years ago and I was like, I want to go to every ballpark within two to three hours of my house. And I did a random search and turned out it was like 12 to 15 stadiums. Now, granted, two hours was putting me right about New York. Um, I could go to Scranton. I could go to Allentown now. I can go, uh, Independent League with York in um, York and Lancaster. There's a team in Harrisburg, which is Double A. Uh, Wilmington, you know. In my, of course, the East Coast it's more compact. You have a lot more people. You can have multiple minor league teams. So, you know, you could always go and watch a minor league game for Penguin. And like I suggested to Penguin AZ. Because Play Action Real has actually come to us from Arizona State's baseball field. Um, you know, if if you want to take the kids out to a game, you know, and like, you know, first time them experiencing a game, you know, they may not know who who the players are. They may not know, um, you know, they may not know Paul Goldschmidt or Bryce Harper or... Um, Merrill Kelly, uh, who's the uh, pitcher for the Diamondbacks. You know, you may not know those names, but you know what? You, you, you can, especially on the cheap, you can see, hey, do my, do my kids like baseball? Do they want to learn about the baseball? Learn about, learn about the baseball. Learn about baseball even... If you're not going there, who knows? Maybe if you're sitting close enough to to the field, you get a you get a baseball player. It gives you a ball, and then, or maybe if you have two kids, a ball for each kid. You know, next thing you know, um, oh uh, yeah, and yeah, Al Roker, I did say it. You said balls. <laughs> so, you know, you know, and you know. And, if you if they don't like it, it doesn't put you out of house and home for a couple of weeks, you know. And you know what? And if they do like it, you say, well, instead of going to this single A game or this rookie league game, hey, let's go to let's go to the Diamondbacks game. And like Penguin Z said, it is a um, you know he said that the hot dogs are the cheapest ones there. Uh, I haven't been to a live game there, but I was there for the MLB Baseball Diversity Summit when they used to hold that every year uh, when I was in school at Drexel. Uh, actually, it was the first year after I was out of Drexel. So, um, but, you know, networking and stuff like that. And, um, you know, it's a, you know, the stadium, you know, it doesn't have any, doesn't have any luxury boxes, but, you know, it's, it, it was Built in the early 90s uh, because they awarded Arizona uh, an MLB team. But yeah, I would always recommend, you know, especially if you're a larger family, why not a minor league game? Especially if you're lucky enough to have a couple of minor league teams in your area. Because guess what? Instead of paying $60 a person for tickets, maybe you pay 15 or 20 Okay, that's a savings of $150, $200 there. Hot dogs are cheaper, soda's cheaper, beer's cheaper for for all the moms and dads out there and the adults uh, that don't have kids. Um, Even though I gave up drinking. Uh, But you get the idea. You know, a little little fun and who knows, maybe, maybe you get a... Maybe you get a a memory for a lifetime. You get a baseball, or you know, you get 
you get to spend time with dear old dad or mom and dad, depending on if mom wants to go to the game too. Um, um, but you know, it's, it's, that's what it's all about. It's, it's about the memories. Um, I was lucky enough that I got to go to baseball games in the late seventies and early eighties with my grandfather. He had three tickets. Usually those Sunday games was him, my dad and me. And, you know, you go to these Sunday games and I would have a blast. But, you know, and and especially, you know, the weather I'd be worried about, especially on the East Coast, because, you know, you get, you know, you get kids that are sitting there, Daddy, it's cold. And, you know, unless you dress them up like it's uh, 50 below zero, you know. They're going to say, Daddy, it's cold. Mommy, it's cold. Eh, you know, that's going to happen too. But, but you know, sometimes if you get a compact crowd, in a, in your, especially in your section of the stadium, the body heat will take over from the, um, from the cold that you may be experiencing, especially here on the East Coast, even though it's going to be warming up nicely tomorrow, thank God. Uh, just in time for me to go on vacation, even though I'm not going anywhere. So, um, now I did mention it before, and uh, Stephen Luker was not here at the beginning of the show. Uh, welcome aboard, Stephen. Uh, I think I said hello before, but give you the official welcome if I didn't already, just to make sure. Um, just to let you guys know, next week, I'm going to have three streams here on No Filter. Um, I'm going to have a Turf Paradise show on Monday night where I will look at the 11 race card, uh, five quarter horse races, which ought to be an epic shit show, those first five, because I'm not la- uh, in Pennsylvania, you can't wager on quarter horse racing because we have an archaics archaic laws here in Pennsylvania. Um, can't bet the quarter horses, but uh, when I go to Vegas, I play the quarter horse tracks once in a while, like Low Sal on the weekends. But um, uh, no, no problem. Stephen Luker said I just came from Eric's show, so that's why I'm late. Not a problem. You know, I'm just having fun here. We have Penguin AZ. You saw him on here. Uh, Rock and Reese was in here. Um, Mickey was in here, uh, but you know, I just want to give you an update. Monday will be the Turf Paradise uh, handicapping show, just to help uh, play action real out. Now, I said I was going to do it, even though he can't go to the racetrack that day uh, with the outing that that he was planning on going to. But you know what? Maybe somebody can put in bets for him, and maybe I can give you guys some winners. And if I lose, just remember, it's free. But if I win, I'll look I'll look half decent as we get closer to the Kentucky Derby. Uh, so that's Monday night. That's I think I scheduled it for eight thirty or eight fifteen because I tried to do it so that it wouldn't totally conflict with the Capo show that AJ does. Um, so I'm planning give him an hour and fifteen minutes, hour and a half. I I do my show, and then I actually I think I did eight fifteen so that I wouldn't overlap too much with the Monday. Monday night show uh, with Steven and Play Action Real um, uh, re- Retro Ad Monday. So, um, so I was trying not to uh, conflict with that as well. So that's why I did early because it was either do it at eight fifteen or do it at like ten or ten thirty. And uh, since I'm awful week and I'll probably be up early on Monday because of the fact that it seems like when I'm on vacation I wake up earlier instead of later. <laughs> but yeah, so um, so that will be Monday. Tuesday will be the regular show. Uh, Thursday will be the regular show, uh, depending on if I survive the the tailgate that we're going to have Thursday at Citizens Bank Park or in the parking lot across the street or whatever. Uh, and Friday will be the audio only podcast I do weekly. Um, next Friday will be the Santa Anita Derby. Um, 
Wood Memorial, not the Morning Wood, the Wood Memorial, and um, the Bluegrass at Keeneland. So those three races will uh, those three races will happen this weekend as well. So, but that'll be next weekend. This weekend is the Arkansas Derby and the Florida Derby. And uh, I haven't looked at those cards yet, but uh, the heavy favorite and the favorite to win the Kentucky Derby right now, he got a very bad post at, at, at Gulfstream. And if you listen to that audio portion, you'll hear me explain that because uh, Stronic totally destroyed that racetrack, in my opinion. But that's a story for another day. So, so that's uh, everything in a nutshell there as well. So, um, now, opening day is Thursday. Um, well, opening day was today, but the home opener for the Phillies is next Thursday. And every year, your ball, your local MLB ballpark, and even the minor leaguers, the minor league stadiums, if you're closer to a minor league stadium or you're in an um, area where you don't have the... Um, you don't have the opportunity of going to uh, a major league ballpark if there's nothing in your area. Um, there's new things that you can try. And um, now, for example, Citizens Bank Park, my home ballpark, um, they are going to have they announced some of the things on there. And I thought I had saved the 6ABC article, but I found a couple of articles that were other articles I did find that I actually sh shared on my Facebook. Um, so let me share my screen here. I can share some of the things here as well. Um, there we go. So one of the things that they are going to have this year is the Charlie Manuel inspired cheesesteaks. And if you are a friend with me on Facebook, I'm not a fan of Charlie Manuel. Um, I will tell you that, in my opinion, um, Charlie Manuel did not win that World Series. It was Jimmy Williams, the bench coach, because... Um, Gillick, the general manager, realized that uh, there was possibility, you know, he, he saw a weakness, a potential weakness, and he said, you know what, if I can bring this guy in, he can work with Charlie, and he would win the World Series. So, Phillies did win in 2008. I give Jimmy, William more, Jimmy Williams more credit than Charlie Manuel. So, I'm trying to stir the drink uh, last night when I went to bed. And I did it just on Facebook because I know I would get a bunch of shit on Twitter. I said, can we honor Jimmy Williams because he's really the guy that won the World Series because of the fact that in 2009, after Jimmy Williams retired, we had that ugly play in game four in the top of the ninth where Johnny Damon had a double steal against the Phillies because Charlie Manuel decided, oh, I'm going to severely shift the infield because uh, Mark Teixeira is up. And that was the end of the World Series for the Phillies. So, uh, but, um, so one of the things that they're going to be offering is this cheesesteak. Uh, it's honoring Charlie Manuel. Uh, it's going to debut behind Section 109. I know in terms of Stephen Luker and Play Action Reel, it's like, I don't give a shit where that is because I'm not going to be at Citizens Bank Park this year. But, um, but for those that are listening after the fact, um, uh, they have um, um, it's going to be uh, an Italian uh, Lissio's Italian Bakery roll. It looks like it's a seated roll, from what I can tell here in this picture, and. Uh, um, it's a seeded roll, uh, and it, it'll come with hers kettle chips, and they put regular chips there. But uh, it looks like it's from this um, wit, wit or without. Uh, that's a uh, cheesesteak place 
uh, in Philadelphia, in the Philadelphia area. So, and also this year, and I'm going to go to this article in a second as well, because there was stuff on there about Arizona as well, I think. Um, Aris, uh, Aramark will have a season's inning stretch theme that brings new options to the ballpark this spring, summer, fall. Um, in Philadelphia, there's going to be a jerk chicken sandwich served on a brioche roll with pickle slaw and fried plantains. That'll be available in section 143 behind left field. Uh, that's about the area where um, um, Bulls Barbecue is and also Harry the Caves. Um, another new menu item is Mexican Street Popcorn. That'll be available at Pass and Stow, and that's the restaurant uh, by the first base area. Um, and that's the sports pub adjacent to, uh, actually, it's adjacent to third base gate. I'm sorry. Um, now that they open up 90 minutes before the start of each game and open pay, uh, or open pass post game and Mexican street popcorn is tossed in house with, uh, I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna butcher that. I'm going to respect, uh, um, the Spanish language and not ruin that. So, uh, you saw me highlight that. Um, now, this sounds good. Pass and Stowe is also going to have South Philly disco fries with roast pork, melted sharp provolone cheese, broccoli rob, and roasted red peppers. And that's that there. And Federal Donuts is going to have cr new crispy ham battered chicken tenders served with dipping sauce. So that may be something I try next Thursday. Um, and the one thing with Citizens Bank Park is they do have um, local businesses in the ballpark. Uh, Manco and Manco, which is a uh, a pizza place down the shore, they they uh, open up a stand in Ashburn Alley. Um, Colby Southern Kiss Chicken, I've never had that. Um, Man Alley Concept Part owned by Ryan Howard. Okay, yeah, that was there last year. I just never tried it. Um, but, you know, every, every year they the teams announce those new uh, options. Now, I think I saw something here as well that I'm going to share with you as well, just so that. Um, whoops, did want to turn my camera off there. I'm sorry. Uh, let me go here, share this one. OK, and this is directly from Aramark. Um, Yeah, we got the jerk chicken sandwich here. Uh, funnel cake fries at City Field. Beef steak empanadas at Coors Field. The bang me slowly sandwich in Rogers Center in Toronto. Oh, bang me chicken sandwich. Okay, I'm joking around there. Avocado fries at Fenway. Um, was it? I swear I saw something here about Arizona Penguin AZ. That's why I wanted to mention it to you. Um, Well, apparently not. Uh, Aramark must not do uh, Arizona uh, Chase Field's uh, concessions. Just double check this here. Yeah, I screwed up. Okay. So, yeah, every every stadium does is going to have all kinds of um, all kinds of things there. So, you know, they announced the new stuff every year. And since I thought I saw Arizona mentioned in that article and they didn't, let me give myself yet again, another one of those. So, 
So yeah, I screwed up. <laughs> uh, Rockies and Padres are tied at one in the bottom of the fourth here. And uh, I have um, um, Arizona on the run. Um, Arizona. San Diego on the money uh, on the run line tonight. Uh, trying to double my money on that bet. Uh, say we're even money plus 100 to win by more than a run and a half. Um, so two or more runs, actually. So, And uh, if you do have, um, once again, if you do have um, um, online accounts, uh, online sportsbook wagering accounts, uh, there's a great app called Picket. It'll keep track of all your wagers, win or loss, that are done on whatever app you use, whether it's DraftKings, FanDuel, MGM, Caesars, you know, all of them. Um, what you do is um, if you use my code on Picket, that's P I K K I T, my code is Field Goal 7450. I'll put, type that in there yet again. Now, they're not a sponsor, but I love it because it's a great app. You can interact with people. It's it's sports Twitter in a way. It's gambling Twitter without, without all the political bullshit. Um, but you do have, um, you know, can, even if you don't post anything, you can keep track of everything. Um, I post my wagers on there because, you know, I don't mind somebody laughing at me, you know. It is what it is. Um, but I did have Hunter Green this afternoon, uh, eight strikeouts. And when Penguin AC was on here, I was joking around and I said that, uh, you know, they made sure he got his eight strikeout and then they pulled him. But actually, it's because his pitch count was in the mid 80s in the fourth inning. So they said, okay, this is enough for opening, opening day. Um, but if you go to, if you download the Picket app on your smartphone, Use that fuel. Use that code Fuel Goal Seven Four Five Zero. You will get between three and a hundred dollars, and also I will get between three and a hundred dollars. So, um, and you can demo that back to yourself or Cash App or whatever. Get it back into your regular bank account or whatever you use those uh, money transfer sites for. So, uh, it's a fun app. I use it. Um, you know, fun way me to. It's also a way that I can keep track of my winnings. I'm still up 300 this month after the fiasco of the last 10 days of the NCAA tourney. Uh, but thankfully, I got on such a hot streak that I'm well ahead for the calendar year. So uh, it's a fun thing that I do uh, as well. So um, now, any last thoughts before I close things up here for tonight? I always, I always try to do that. So if you're watching. Uh, after the fact, even on YouTube, because um, AJ will be uploading this onto YouTube, I take care of the audio portion, making it part of my podcast. Um, so one thing I will say is, if you're listening to the show or you're watching after the fact, um, you know, come on over, nofilter.net. You'll see that Welcome to Philadelphia sign. Uh, for, that's the... Um, that's the logo that I use even on here on No Filter. Thanks to Rock and Reese for making that for me. Um, you know, just click on that ticket and you're in. And then when you come in, we're interactive here. Talk in the chat. I mean, Tony Bruno's chat, when he's here on Friday nights, it's going vroom, vroom, vroom. I mean, I mean we need to get No Filter to possibly have a uh, slow mode where you can't put in another reply for about five seconds, but that's, yeah, that's not gonna happen, but I'm over exaggerating, but you get the idea because Tony draws, Tony's the man. Um, but, you know, you can interact within the chat itself. I will see the chat as well, or, you know, if it's just interaction between, for example, Penguin AZ and Steven Luker, you know, if they wanna talk to each other, go right ahead. That's the great thing about, about these chats is you can add your own side conversation here. And if there's something that's topical to what it is, maybe I find it. If not, I'll let you guys talk while we're having fun here. Uh, but once you come in here, 
we do have that knock button on the lower right hand side and not just my show any show on no filter if you want to join the conversation you hit that button and you're in you know just make sure you're um uh make sure you um have the um you uh allow the uh microphone and camera to be used once you do that we're all set we can have fun we can talk as long as you want or as little as you want you can give me the finger well, i don't recommend that because if you do that all the time i might have to ban your ass and i don't want to ban anybody uh, but you know it's all i have fun here that's what it's all about and uh you know and you know it's nice to have this this group here on no filter and you know i'm trying to build something here and uh little by little baby steps and uh and uh penguin az said we can have a knock and battle is that like a ding dong ditch <laughs> but yeah so um uh, I'm having fun with this and uh, glad to be here uh, with you guys every Tuesday and Thursday nights here on nofilter.net, 9.15 Eastern Time. I believe the show on Monday night is at 8.15. I will update you tomorrow night on the audio podcast because um, make it, I'll, I'll give you the my picks for the final four. I'll give you those picks for the the Florida Derby and the Arkansas Derby and uh, anything else that comes up between uh, right now and tomorrow night when I start recording. So, uh, so that looks like that's going to be it for this show. And uh, I do want to thank Penguin AZ for knocking Stephen Luker for joining me tonight. Uh, Rock and Reese was in here. Mickey was in here. I appreciate everybody for coming in. Uh, I appreciate it so much. And uh, I appreciate everybody who takes the time to listen to this podcast, even after the fact, or even watches after the fact. So, um, you know, I couldn't do it without any, I couldn't do it without you guys. And, uh, you know, we'll get this to grow. So uh, I do want to thank you all for joining me tonight. Uh, I will be back Tuesday, uh, Monday night. Jeez, I talking about Monday night. I forgot all about it. So. Uh, I'm going to download that program tonight so I can start looking over it tomorrow, or actually Saturday and Sunday, so that I have every all my points ready to go Monday night at 8.15. At least I think it's 8.15. I'll confirm that uh, on uh, my audio podcast tomorrow night. So, uh, Stephen, Penguin AZ, thank you so much for joining me. This has been the Philly Guy Speaks podcast. I am Joe Quills, and this podcast is part of the Bleacher Brothers Sports Network. Give them a follow at bleacherbrothers.com. Have a great night, everybody. Go Phils, even though you stunk the night. And uh, go Diamondbacks as well. And uh, go whoever team that Stephen Luke roots for. So good night, everybody.